everybody and welcome to a brand new episode of Vanda's Review. Oh my god, I look like a banana, banana, banana. Like a durian inside. Yes, I am Vanda Miss Joachim wearing all yellow. This is what we call in Malay, Keramat. Everybody, it's called Keramat. Yes, today I have a really special guest. A biological woman. Shut Hi everyone. Shut up. <laughs> you, not yet. I haven't even done your introduction. Shut oh, up. No. <laughs> she is one of my sister. We have, oh my god, we have gone through all the crazy shits together. We fought together. We fought it with each other a lot of times. I was his rival. He was my rival back in school days. We went to the mosque together. <laughs> oh my god, we went to the mosque. Together, okay, we went to the mosque together. He is a poster child. Everywhere in Singapore, you'll see his face, even on YouTube videos. He violated all my YouTube advertisement with his face. He was supposed to be my special guest, but he couldn't make it, so he sent this Mina to entertain me for this episode of Vanda's Review. That's right. Everybody, let's welcome Shasha Na Wu. Woo! Hi guys, we're in Sushi today, like Nasi Lemak Ikan Belis. My name is Shasha, I'm 32 years old, I'm still single. I'm a beautiful brown mixed girl. I'm half Milo brown and half dinosaur. <laughs> girl, this is the most fishiest that I've ever seen you. What's wrong with you? A fish? Girl, I was born biological. What are you talking about? You're delusional. You're a delusional queen. This, this, this morning beat face was done by my nan other than Ida Raffaelli. She's lying down on the couch right now. She doesn't want to show her face. But she didn't have to do much. She was just like powder, powder, brows, bam. And then my natural, <laughs> my natural mommy's bones. You know when I drag, do you look like your mom when you drag? Because when I drag, I look like my mom. So every time someone say I look mannish, I'll be like, watch your fucking mouth on my mom. Don't be rude Ooh. to my mom right now. How is it like being the poster child on the MRT, on every YouTube advertisement? How do you feel? How's you know, like? at the end of the day, I started out as a character actor. I every time I do girl roles, it's it's really just me being a character actor. I have so much respect for drag queens who, before a pandemic, did this every weekend. So I feel like the fact that the Singapore government was okay with green lighting a, a poster campaign with me being in drag, even though I'm not a drag queen proper, I feel like. It is such an opening for uh, a lot of opportunities out there for drag queens like yourself. So hey, future campaigns out there, they are real drag queens. I always give them shout out. I always show them yes. my support and love. So uh, as a comedian actor, it, I think it's a lot easier for us because they always see us just as an actor. But you guys have a harder time and I hope we open doors for you guys. That's, you know what, Thank let's open doors for y'all. Thank you very much. Terima kasih. Kaka appreciate eh? Yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah. I wanna tell you this. I, I think I told you before, but I wanna tell you this again. Your mm -hmm. art is always provoking. You always come up with a, a, like fresh materials, like brand new materials, especially for your YouTube channel. Like where do you get all this inspiration from? Where do you get all this idea from? Uh, just from being sampah masyarakat. You know, when you are society's trash, uh, your inspiration is a plenty. I've got yes. inspirations all a plenty. Yeah. Because for uh, some people, some trash are treasure. You can't spell trash without treasure. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> you can't. <laughs> As you can tell, my spelling is all over the place. Yeah. The minute I become my Mina character, my spelling is all misspelling. Sorry, my English not feeling so well. Sorry about this that. This is for the editor. Um, please put subtitles down down below. What's the definition of a Mina? So yeah. thank you. All I your daughters it. are Mina. Hey, but actually, I look like I look like your daughters. Yeah, I look like I could be Anastasia right now. I look like be Dahlia. Oh my, oh my god. god, I'm fish like Dahlia now. Shasha, you gotta but, cover that five o'clock shadow first before <gasps> you wanna come for my daughters. Okay, first of all, you know who, uh, who, which one of your daughter I definitely look like? I have the waistline of an Ariana Conda! <laughs> Ariana! <laughs> oh my god, why? You're you are in love with Ariana. You're in love, love with her. 
I love your comedy queen daughters. I feel like if you give me an opportunity to groom them, they will be such, such finesse uh, comic queens. I, I love them so much. I want to do so many things yes. with them. You won an award recently. It's Asian recognized, okay, or the worldwide recognized. I, do, I don't know, but I know you won something. You, you won best dress event, so congratulations to you. Hey, if you were going to be the sister of Vanda Miss Joachim, you got to turn up to a red carpet. The next red carpet we're walking, we're walking all three sisters down. You, me, and Yes. We need to do that. And just everybody chua. I haven't yeah. seen her for the longest time, so well, we her need next to episode come is back. Here. Yeah, we do. We really do. I miss you guys so much. Also, Wait. like... Vanda, I... If I want to bring... Mm, yeah. Kara, Kara, Kara. No, 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 you. <laughs> you know, no, I, so I can bring her. I would... <laughs> I would love to bring her in this episode, but the, the problem is she cannot wake up in the morning. She can't. She can't. Okay? She can't. That's just, it's the gradient of sisters. The most responsible one is the middle child, followed by Vandermiss Joachim, sometimes, and then followed by Andrew Excuse Strzok. me, the both I have like, met my ways. I have, have changed have. a lot. You, you know what? You are so amazing. You come on my set on time now. That's Thank why I you. I pay you now. <laughs> <laughs> I turn it off! I turn it off! I also salute your work etiquette is because you want to get you want to make sure everything goes on well goes on plan no time wasting on set anyways who is your favorite queen from season 13 of RuPaul's Drag Race oh my gosh okay, what are you waiting for so this season I think it is a very very eclectic season um, mm -hmm. for me I am I'm a fan of the House of Miss Joking, which means when I look at a drag queen, showmanship is so important. So Denali is making my top cut right now. I feel like she's so under supported. Uh, is why? It? I, it's I just agree. You don't like Denali? I mean, she is talented, no doubt about it. But I don't see any character yet. I don't see any strong personality. You know, like it's just she's a professional. Okay, if you look at her, doesn't she remind you of Shangela in season three, where she just wants to do her work. She wants to. She just wants to be known to be good. She doesn't need to know like, hey, I'm the funny queen or I'm the loud queen. She just wants to be known for her work and. If anything, look at her lip syncs. Her lip syncs are a thousand percent all the time. Uh, I feel like, you know what? I feel like she needs to be in the bottom one more time for people to go, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's, she's, she's yeah. super great. I don't know. I think her shines, uh, she, she kind of fake a little bit. Who do yeah, you like? Sherry Pie. <laughs> in this season, I am falling in love more with Simone's aesthetic. Yeah, she's like really out of the box. But the thing is, I feel that if you want to be like a all-rounder queen, you have to be versatile. You have to adapt with all the challenges. You have to make do with all the challenges. You have to make it work. Even though you're not a dancer, just fake it to make it. You know. Yeah, I feel yeah. I, I feel the same way. I think Simone definitely makes my top three. Okay, why don't mm -hmm. we go top three? I have Denali on it. I have Simone on it. Up on the third, it wow, it's so hard this season. But I yes. I, I definitely think God make will make it to top four. Yes, I, I've got a feeling that she'll make it to top four. But my yes. top three is Rosé, Simone, Olivia. and Simone. Simone. And Olivia, yes. Yeah, She's yeah, like, like the Olivia. underdog in the yeah. competition. But that's the thing, these queens are so young also. Do you remember like earlier seasons of Drag Race? Like people were already in the game for like 10 years and 15 mm. years. And these, yeah. que these queens are starting younger and younger. And I'm not a drag queen by any chance, so I shouldn't be commenting. But uh, I also feel like even though they start younger, they start so polished. So the question now is, it's so exciting to see where would their trajectory be 10 years from now? Like how mm. much more will they take their drag to be? Because drag queens now are starting at age 14. You know, at age 14, yeah. we were even afraid to go home late. You know, <laughs> let yes. more put on makeup. <laughs> yeah. Can we the most the we do is case. we put a towel, we put a towel, we put a t-shirt over the hair, the and curtains. we are queens. Yeah. Yes. But yes. I guess that's that's the blessing of being the next generation. They get to mm -hmm. uh, start earlier. And Enjoy all this. Class. Yeah. Because you know, with RuPaul's Drag Race so, being so mainstream right now, everybody's like watching it. You know, like back then for me, I had to go down to clubs to actually pro watch a proper drag show. I don't she, know what she cannot is. change at home. Did you guys know that? Vanda Miss Joachim had to be oh in the staircase God. or at the backstage. Toilet, public toilet. 
Oh my god, we did that. That we did. We did. Oh my gosh. We were in the handicap bathroom together. People. Our like, hand. Yes. Our handicap bathroom. Thank God. Thank you, government, for doing that for us. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Are we ready? <laughs> yes, we are ready. Oh my god, we talk so much. Okay. So let's get into it. Season thirteen, Snatch Game episode of RuPaul's Drag Race. Yes, let's go. Yes, God. Yeah, I'm going to share my screen. Yes, ma'am. I feel like my drag reminds me of Joey J. <laughs> Hodgepodge, crafty. <laughs> In Malay, we call it Jadila girl. <laughs> Jadila. Yes. Oh. I love Lalari. I love Lalari. I just wish that um, her, her fashion was a bit more ready. I love Denali. You have your favorite, I have mine. Who's yours again? Simone. At first, it was Utica Queen, and then Olivia Lux, and then Simone. I see. My name's Simone, and I'm here for the crown. Dip fish and a market so grow. <laughs> the ebony and chantus is me. Legs to my waist, I love you can't replace. Tamisha Iman is coming for you. <laughs> to show the world what I can do. Do you remember how how I was taking COVID so much more seriously yes. uh, in January of last year and people were still like laughing at me. Well, yeah. Did you remember we sat at a cafe and you thought like I was being so dramatic when people were sneezing? You were laughing me off? Babe, you know why people listen to me? you shouted at them. <laughs> you shouted at them. Hey, you, cover your mouth. Hey, I'm like, girl. We are in Plaza was, Singapore for gonna say. This was before the pandemic was full blown and I was already so heightened. I <laughs> so trust you know me. What? He really take it seriously. He wore two masks, okay. He was wearing like a, two layers of I wore, masks. I wore two masks. I, I was a bit extra back then, but you yeah. know what? If everyone listened to me, we would have drag shows right now. Okay now, okay now. Uh, oh, I was here. How was New York for you? My favorite city in the world. Did Did New York treat you with respect? Yes, it's amazing. I mean, people don't really care if you go out with wig with like clip clip-ons and whatnot mm. because i was staying in jersey and i had a show in in i think near brooklyn area yeah. and I, I just took the subway i took the uh, took the bus and nobody just yeah nobody gives a damn people came out came out to me and told me that i'm beautiful but i don't you that, really are i feel like when the pandemic is over i really want to see you make a footprint in new york i feel yes. like yeah. The world has not witnessed enough of you yet. I think uh, the drag race, like DragCon was such a good imprint for you. Experience, but yeah. I need the world to know Vandam is joking. You know what I mean? Uh, and because I was there... there for two weeks and I don't, I don't feel that I've shown enough, you know. I was trying to get gigs from clubs to clubs but I only got one. And I'm like, ah, oh, I really want to perform like at more places. I want people to just watch me perform. But yeah, maybe yeah. next one. Maybe next one. New York. Okay, girl. We Why should don't you go date together. A... Why don't you date an American and just get married in New York? You know? Shut hey. up. Looking for a green card. <laughs> I'm not that desperate, okay? I have someone I who loves me. <laughs> yeah, okay. She's beautiful. She's perfect. She has a husband. She looks like Linda Evangelista. She's a model. While I here work my ass off and I still have nothing. Well, I'm you have people man. around you. Just you're fussy. I keep saying this. Fussy. I'm not. I'm not. Or maybe you scare them. You I, scare I, them I think I'm scared. <gasps> Is this an intervention? Oh no. Oh no, her fashion, right? <laughs> her fashion's actually very good. I like Olivia's fashion. <laughs> Can I just say that Rosé looks like Shane Dawson? Who's that? Oh my god, I remember the local drag queen in Singapore doing this a lot. Uh, yes! Digital drag. How much has it changed for you guys actually? Uh, you know, not being able to do gigs. 
you know, at the end of the day, art is the first to take a blow and the last to recover in, in such an economy, right? So how do you guys sustain throughout? It's been almost a year. Yeah, it's a year. I mean, doing digital shows, it's, it's something new for all of us, especially for me. I'm, I'm not really a, a tech-savvy person. I have to edit my videos, I have to record my own video, you know, I have to come up with my own concept. I mean, usually that's what I do, but, you know, to record myself and to edit yeah. my own video is, is really a challenge for me. And that is a skill that I picked up during the um, our circuit breaker, sort of like a lockdown in Singapore. And when I pick up that skill, I'm like, oh my god, you know, I can actually do more with this skill. So hence why I did some gigs with like Spotify and um, Google. And yeah. yeah. So I think also there's there's pros and cons lah during the pandemic because for me what? as a performer, we really just want to perform, we want to entertain, we want to express ourselves, yeah. but we can't do that. Especially for some of the drag queens that I know that they can't do drag at home because of family and stuff. So mm. yeah. I feel like uh, which is why when I had the capacity to hire you for like a mm. small private event. That was yeah. actually just a, a friendly gathering. I was like, Correct. you know what? Let's <laughs> let's holler her back, because I know you guys miss performing. At the end of the day, you all miss that live reaction. It's not the same through the internet. I know this because I'm a YouTuber myself. But I too miss live shows. Like when when the shows are now starting to open in Singapore, like and people are spread out, the audience are spread out. I tell myself, do I want to wait for like a proper stage to to blow up? Or do I want to do it now? And I tell myself, I'll have a little bit of patience. Also because... I just want to be a wifey. Good for you, girl. Good for you. Yeah. Wifey to who? So I don't know lah. I don't know. I know who. I don't know say. Hey man, tell eh. Stop it. I feel this way about you when I see the brand Vandam is Joachim entering Drag Race Thailand. You not just representing the country, you represented the diaspora of Nusantara natives, Malay kids who are displaced by the voice of the bigger, larger society and then the cultural aspect of our community. And People I feel don't realize. The same way, yeah, and I feel the same way about you when you eh? became the ambassador for Pink Dog. Ah, uh, the last the about first... me now. No, but really, I mean, you know, I think both of us, even Andres, you know, we want to make a statement with the, the things, the skills, the talent that we, we, we have, you know, with all yeah. these platforms. I think the next generation, while they are opening even a bigger volume of opportunities for themselves and for the community, we should never ever pick on the generation before us for what they could not have done further. Because yes. maybe it's what was enough that we could have done at the point of time for ourselves. You know, I will never shit on people like Kuma or Norista. They opened doors for us uh, yes. and they were the reason why I'm even brave enough to put on a wig on my hair. So I share, you, I share the same sentiment, yeah. A thousand percent, like, I feel like when I see you in Drag Race Thailand, I think a lot of Malay kids are looking at it and go like, wow, I finally feel visible, I finally feel seen. People don't realise how especially difficult it is to be a Malay Muslim drag queen, okay? Because when we go to the West, we're being stigmatised for being Muslim, and then when we come here, we're stigmatised for representing queer culture. So we are sandwiched between two dynamics in this world right. and nobody realised how much painful and how depressing that, that space in our minds can be. Uh, and truth. nowadays, the, the internet has amplify these voices so that the next generation don't have to notice the kind of pains that the generations before them went through. But, dude, we came from a timeline where we had to be physically able to run away from our bullies. You know, like yes. bullying during our time was physical, it was beating up. I remember running away from bullies. And nowadays, you know, we are correcting that. And I think and as we do I, that, we should... Yes, uh, speaking of beatings, you know, like bullies, I wish the new generation of of kids, of, of queer people, like they don't have to go through what I went through, being bashed on the streets because that's really a scary, a traumatic experience that I don't think anybody should go through that because it was really difficult for me to recover from that situation, that, that, that whole episode of unfortunate shit that happened to me. So the next time you see a Malay Muslim drag queen, 
understand the story that she is going through. Like for me, I I really think it's easier for me than people like yourself because I come in and out of a character. People just see me as an actor at the end of the day. But for you guys, it's an art form. It's a political st uh, statement. In many forms, when I'm in drag for my videos, I'm a political statement too. But I I get to exit it. You guys, this is your art. A thousand percent back and forth. So please respect your Malay Muslim drag queens. When you see them, tip them. Buy them a drink. Hey, Tiba, buy your Malay Muslim drag queen a drink. Kau paham tak? <laughs> you can buy me a chrysanthemum tea. I love chrysanthemum tea. No, I, but I think I don't in general, drink, but you can buy me Milo. In general, just respect the queens like in Singapore that you see in a bar. Yeah, just in general, I feel because I feel that Chinese drag queens also have their story to tell. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, true, true, true. and just tip all of us in general. Thank you. Thank you for that reminder. Regardless of race, language, or religion, just respect your drag queens. You had a lot of that uh, heat when you appeared on Drag Race Thailand by conservative Malays. How was that like for you? Because I've, I've had my fair share of Malay conservatives hating on me, but for you it was new. So how was that? Well, I don't think that was new because I think Vogelicious days, we already had that. So I was already like prepped for that. The most disappointing is that when it's your own family member, your own cousins, speak about it and look down on you, that really hurts. That really hits hit you more deeply you get more affected by it and How? what i did was i just you know i just told myself you know at least i'm doing something for my own good for my name and i know my intentions are right and i have no intentions of if you guys saw the um, the article saying i'm perverting the religion my religion muslim religion i'm perverting our national flower in which way am I perverting that? Was I sexualizing it? Was I making it into a fetish? No, I don't think so. I was just making a statement, making a political statement at the same time, just being myself, representing my country, myself, my religion with pride. You know, artists like you and myself, we are provocateurs. That's what we do. We can't deny that what we do is to be thought-provoking. Uh, yes. In that, people need to realize what is the heart of the message or the heart of the representation uh, you know being thought provoking is a flavor it's not necessarily a it would have been prov like uh, intentionally provocative if i had said specific things about uh, the community but i and you i see what we are is we just like to tease the world and understand the struggles we face and we are playful like that. Drag is playful like that. And drag should be allowed to be playful like that. Because we are we don't don't take us too seriously. RuPaul said it himself, like drag is not to be taken uh, too seriously. But it has important messages. Like Kuma, for example, a very good example. I love Kuma. That she, she made fun of, of you know like the politics, you know, but people don't take her seriously because she they know that she's a comedy queen, right? She yeah. just throw insult jokes and here and there, but people don't take it seriously. So I think that should be the way. I'm proud of you. Thank you. <laughs> we are supposed to like review the episode, but we don't want to watch it. It's a different kind of episode anyways. Yeah. No, I was really looking forward for the Snatch Game. I think, I think we should have you again the next episode because you are a character queen and I think you'll be great. For okay. a special guest for, for Snatch Game. Shall we do okay, that okay, next no week? Stress. Sure, sure, no stress. I'll let, I'll let you know what time I can do next week. Is that okay? I think the world will also love this idea. They want to see more. Inshallah, our project goes through it. Eh? Inshallah. I mean, Tina Burner's fashion is not that great. Like, I get that she's a camp queen, but I could ask her. Is it a hit or miss? Like last week episode, which look know, was the a taxi hit? outfit? The yellow cap, the yellow Was taxi. that a hit? Yeah, for me it was a hit. I didn't like that one. I love that one actually. I uh, love the black hair on her. I thought she was stunning. Stunning. Uh, but Elliot did a taxi look as well, and I thought like okay. Yeah. So now there's a comparison. Was, yeah, I thought that was more of a fashionable take on that. I see. Yeah. I mean, like nobody's Manila Luzon again. You know what I mean? Like yeah. Manila Luzon to me is the queen of camp. No, you don't think so? I find her more elegant than camp. Manila. I don't. I don't. Yeah, I don't find her fashion campy. It's it's very well 
constructed, and I I thought it was polished than Campy. Oh, but she calls herself the Queen of Camp. Is it? Yeah, I mean, she she she's very dramatic, theatrical, but very fashion at the same time. So I, mean, I love Manila. Camp, it's like Torji Tor. I thought I I think that was Torji like Torji Tor is Camp for sure. You know what I think this episode is? I think it's just, it's a it's a public relation insurance episode where people are like, okay, how did they shoot all this in the middle of a pandemic? So this episode is to like cushion everyone. Even in film productions in Singapore, I have to do that. If you look at my set, not a single person who is not talent can unmask. Yes. Uh, so they are with heavy equipment. I can send you clips of it. Uh, and they're all masked up. Like COVID, it's actually, you know what? It's such a beautiful episode to do with you because I feel like both of us come from different artistry. And you know, this episode is like sort of giving a highlight on our craft and how COVID has changed a lot of things. Yes, a lot of things. That's right. I actually spent money on three parodies last year that never got to produce because uh, I just couldn't understand what was the guideline and what was the most safest yeah. thing. Financially, also, I was like, is this an investment I want to make? You know, each every time I spend on a parody, it's between five to ten grand of my own money. So I can't be careless in 2020. I was so anxious about when am I going to get my next money. So well, every I mean, time you see you, you a parody... Have to, yeah. You have to be smart. You have to be careful and with, with your money especially because, you know, you have to sustain, you have to survive at the end of the day. You don't know how long this is going to be. And I think, you know, if the clubs and the bars are going to open again and there's going to be live performances, I think it's going to be the same thing where we need to mask up even though we are backstage. The only time we can unmask is when we're on stage, you know? Yeah. I feel it's gonna be like that. When do you think the world will go back to pre-pandemic? From where I'm seeing it right now, it's impossible that they're gonna do it like this year, maybe next year, end of next year, I'm not sure. Some reports are saying seven years. We would be near 40 by the time the world a thousand percent heals. We're gonna be 40. <laughs> I hope to find love by that because I plan to gain weight next week. Thank you. Right, so there's no Snatch Game episode today and um, I think we need to do another episode together next for sure. week with Shasha Network. Kirzy, thank you very much for doing this. No worries, really? love. I feel, I, I feel okay. like it's a nice afternoon just sitting down with you and reminisce both your artistry and my artistry. And through that episode, we really see how much COVID has changed, um, you know, how people do art. The industry. Thank you so much. I will, I will update you more in details what's going to happen next week. And Ma'am. yes, so you want to tell the people, my fans or whoever is watching this, your Instagram handle, YouTube <laughs> handles, whatever handle. Uh, <laughs> Love handles, my handle. <laughs> Hi, my name is Hirzi. You can swipe right on Tinder when you see it. But I feel like what's what's important is that you guys continue to support your local drag queens anyways. Uh, my handle is available at Hirzi Official, uh, but my drag handle is at Shasha the Original. Uh, my yes. YouTube channel is Hirzi Official still. Uh, there's a lot of videos with Vanda Miss Joakim. Never has one music video parody I've done not have her in it. So please Thank watch you. them all. <laughs> there's one Thank coming you so up much. where she... Where she gets to be Kylie Jenner. <laughs> oh my god. We need to do another episode. I thank you so much for doing this. I appreciate your effort putting on makeup and a wig and costume early in the morning. So, yes. God. Yes. I love you so much. I will see you soon. I love you too, sis. Kisses next and week, hugs. I know what to do. What, what do you want to do? No, next week, I know what to do already. I need an earpiece. I need to mute. I need to turn on the zoom. I know already, I know. This is Bar- just a rehearsal. Of course. This Bar- is just course. rehearsal. This you is like a full rehearsal dress book? rehearsal, eh? <laughs> full dress rehearsal, everybody. Yes. Okay, okay, you better go get running. I know you need to get food and get fat and some dicks in your mouth. So, I will see you. Thank you very much. Love you. Bye. Bye.